Buenas, buenas. Welcome to Music Marketing TV. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and today I'm very proud to announce the release of FatFilter Twin 3. Now, FatFilter is a brand that we've been working with for many years here at Music Marketing. Uh, we've been working on their uh, campaigns endlessly for the past several years, and so um, I'm very excited to show the Twin 3 synthesizer. It's um, long time in the making it contains the different uh, modulation sections that are in saturn and volcano and uh, timeless 3 which you know there are in the side of the creative bundle from fat filter and along with that there's also updates to the oscillators and the warflow as you can clearly see here um when we had a meeting um actually the the first time we 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 met with the Fat Filter team. It was uh, actually for me it was at the Emmy Awards uh, when we won the Emmy Award for uh, Fat Filter Pro Q3, and I suggested to them to make a 64 dB uh, uh, gain uh, feature on uh, Pro Q3, which is ridiculous for most people. For 99% of the users, it's ridiculous. But for me, I make hard stop, and it's something that I really like to do. Overdrive. Uh, my distortions and push uh, things beyond the limit and this is what twin 3 i think it's for me now it's a synthesizer that i can push to the limits that i couldn't do with any other synthesizer and the the amazing part is that it's so simple to use um right now it's there's a lot of things going on but if we were to reduce this patch to a clean one we could see here that it's very simple it's one oscillator on the left hand side we have our effects on the right hand side we can see with a spectrum analyzer the sound as we're, as we're working on it right now you can't hear any audio but uh, i'll turn it on eventually but i just want to show you guys the um around the synth a little bit uh you can see here we have the modulations uh, the xy controllers the sliders the xlfos the envelope generators the envelope followers, the MIDI sources, which we have plenty of, and we have our keyboard down here, and we can kind of get rid of all these if we want and just show what is essential to us at the moment. So the, the synthesizer, what it really highlights is that with just a few different oscillators and lots of modulation, you can have very complex, very rich sounds. On top of that, um, we have a plethora of different models of uh, filters. So, though it might seem a little bit limited to only have four oscillators and not have wavetables or FM synthesis, with the addition of these uh, filters and the plethora of modulation sources and destinations and modulation slots and the possibility to modulate a modulation slot via another envelope or XLFO, we have the ability to create sounds that we would never heard before with a virtual analog synthesizer. And with the control of uh, the, the creative uh, modules inside of the creative bundle. So anyhow, um, in this uh, walkthrough of a hard style track, I wanted to show you uh, lots of sound design that I made. Also some of the demo presets and just overall, a lot of the Twin 3 um, uh, sounds. Anyway, let's take a listen to the demo track here. <laughs> Wow. Wow. 
How did they get out of this cloud? So that's the demo track I came up with. Now this is going to be a series of videos. I'm also going to be uh, showing off a dubstep um, a track later on and uh, have a bunch of different ideas because it's such a interesting synthesizer. Um, let me just show you some of the earlier, earlier ideas I had. As you can see, these patches are absolutely mad. And the crazy part about this is with many other synthesizers, you can kind of try to replicate sounds um, of other synths, but you're not going to be able to the same of the twin because there's so much so many algorithms going on the drive if you move it um from down to to the, like if you change the amount just check this out it becomes like from like a bit crusher to like a distortion to like overdrive and like the guitar amp. It, it does so many things with one knob. It's insane. Um, let me turn down the master tuning here. Minus 12. You hear there how we get like those high harmonics back in there. But yeah, that just goes to show like with just the drive, you can change the tone of the sound so much. Okay, let's let's take this from the top. Let's um work on percussion first and then we're gonna go down. Um which is probably what most people want to hear, the kick drums. So the, the kick drums, I was very impressed with the, um, the percussion that was included inside a uh, timeless 3. Let me load up a new 
a new track here. So call this a kick. And three. Load this puppy up and load up some MIDI here. Okay, here we go. So we load up a default patch. Quite simple. But if we go to clean, we just get that saw wave. And then we get the filter here. That can self resonate. And then you have these different type of distortions, or I mean, I mean uh, filters that will, when you drive them in, have different distortion. So there you can start getting a feel for the tone of the different um, filters, which is very important with the synthesizer. Um, it, it's, it's such a right to have a synthesizer that has nonlinear filters and has so much, so much richness and character in it. Um, if we were just to grab a XLFO, for example, and change the, the peak of it a little bit, We can appreciate how when we start driving, the tone changes quite a bit. Now, um, let's get rid of that. Let's turn this into a sine wave. And we're gonna add an envelope. Now, I can add envelopes here. Let's add an envelope generator, bring the sustain down, put it on the frequency, of the first filter. And we can hear there, we're letting the little transients from the little click come in. If we were to use a different waveform, we can hear some of those harmonics. But because it's just a sign, we just get the click. Now, if we use a different envelope, I'll use this as a pitch envelope. And I'll apply it to the master tuning. See that? Now, one thing I like about uh, the new Fat Filter Twin 3 is that I can change the name here. So I can call this pitch envelope. So now I can call it that. And that is so much better than not having an ability to name it and then just seeing a bunch of different uh, modules everywhere. Okay, so we have that right here. Okay. And now what I'll do is I'll pitch this down. And I will do the same with my MIDI. And you can hear there the oscillator drift, right? And we can see it visually too, which is quite awesome. If I were to add another sine wave, and because it's being pitched automatically there, let's set this to zero dB. We can hear how the phase cancellation starts happening. And some hits are louder and some kids are kicks are uh, quieter. We can, however, uh, move this around and have them be re-triggered. Even then, we still get some, some drift. But there we go. We get some really, uh, really nice loud kick drum. We can save this quite easily here. Save as, and then go to, go to my presets. In my case, I'll, I like to do this. Uh, KK, kick drum, and then this. 
simple sign. And there we go, we got a first little patch for Twin 3. Now, Twin 3 is a polysynth, so we're going to get more into the poly stuff a little bit later on, but I just want to work down the mono stuff and then get you guys situated with the filters and then the processing, and then we can head over to the polyphonic stuff, which is really, really cool. Okay. Now, I want to do something else, too. I want to use this on the peak. See, now we're distorting the output of Twin 3 and also uh, Studio One. A little bit. Do you see that? So we can add a compressor. We can make the kick drum even punchier. Or we can add distortion. See that? But again, if we go a little past, um, what is this like? Two o'clock, past two o'clock, we start to get some shelving because it's kind of like a guitar amp. To me, the sweet spot is right around here. Right before it goes into guitar mode. There. Now I can add a other oscillator here and I can make this a white noise. And I can set this to be per oscillator. So we're going to have a different filter per oscillator. See that? Awesome. And I'm going to add a modulation to these other um, filters as well. And there we go. We created a hard style kick punch. That simple, that easy, that quick. And the coolest thing about this is if we use a plugin like Scyscope, we can start to see the, the envelope, right? And it's, it's very helpful. So you can start to fine tune a little bit. And right there, I can see that the bass might be a little too loud. So what I can do is roll this off a little bit. And that's a little bit smoother. And I can start using this, you know, to, to make more sound design. But anyway. There we go. We got we we now have a a hard cool cool cool. Now what I want to do is increase the envelope here with these. Or download the MIDI note because I'm using MIDI and not audio and extend the length of these MIDI notes. So I can grab all the ones that are Set to quarter or I'm, I'm working in triplets right here, so it's I think it's a quarter triplet. Might be. There we go. And I can extend the MIDI. And now I have the body of the kick drum. Now I can start working on let's say the toe portion of a kick drum. And I can change the MIDI. And I'm working in A in this track, so it's just to A. Awesome. So there we go. We have a hard style kick drum. And then I can add an envelope right here. Generator and I can filter out some of the frequencies in the top end. 
Now check this out. This is what's the most amazing part of the synth, in my opinion. When I bring the filter down here, Yes, it's letting the most of the frequencies go through. But then I have this other filter frequency offset that offsets all the other filters together. Check this out. Yes. So now I can get something that's a little bit more old school because it's more degraded in the high frequencies. It, back in the days, you couldn't distort as much because it was a bit harder to do. And there wasn't as many distortion plugins. But as plugins started handling oversampling better, we could destroy the higher frequencies and not have as many issues. But anyway, th there you go. You can offset the filter frequency, and that's something I use in the track here. For example, in the uh, when the talk kick is introducing the impact kick right here. And boom, a big kick after that. And it's as simple as changing the filter frequency offset because these are all together. These are all harmonically um, interlaced. So you can mess around with the, the fre filter frequency offset. And the coolest thing about it, in my opinion, is that you can push it to be one octave higher, two octaves higher, two octaves higher, and so on, which is something that I did here with the punches on the, the other talks. Let me show you. This one is two octaves higher. This is what it sounds like when it's only one octave higher. And that sounds really similar to this other one over here. It said this one is driven a little bit harder. And I work with the delay and the reverb a little bit more to, to create like these uh, other effects. Of the movement of the reverb, and actually, we see the slice go over here. You can see that reverb right there. Now, the way I built the reverb into the uh, plugin is by using another envelope generator that was modulating the amp of something else. And because that's amplifying something, when it comes back down, I can assign it to come back and amplify the reverb. So I can apply a negative modulation. So check this out. If I go right here to the modulation, I can swap it out to negative. If it were positive, it would follow the same uh, envelope as the rest of the, the, um, the frequencies, or in this case, what am I ampli amplifying? I'm just amplifying that one, I think. And we also have EG6. I'm modulating the oscillator level, the filter 2 frequency, the EG3, and the filter 3 peak, and the FX reverb mount. So, I would get a deeper, a farther sounding sound, but I want to have something that's a little bit more present. But still have that that um, reverb come in and like sway you in at the end of the kick drum. So I wanted to have that and I did it using a the opposite modulation, okay? Of the envelope generator. generator. That's how easy it was. I could uh, change the slope here. And so it perfectly how I want. 
So then when it comes to my mix, it fits right in. So I can get it out of my other drums or um, sound design. I wanted to get it specifically out of the way of the reverse bass because the reverse bass has a lot of mid frequencies and the reverb here clash with it. So yeah, also made other different talks, which are kind of crazy. Uh, let me show with the other one that we made here. over to let's see and now these are using the delay so if you see here we're using the envelope generators to affect the the delay peak is working so the EG3 is affecting the delay time, the keyboard is affecting the filter frequency, and the delay is also being modulated by the other the EG3 again. So I really try to get some resonance going in there. So I get all these from one that I will not ready for. Sorry, it's a um, um texture. I think I said said harmonics. It's more like texture than anything. Amazing how you can do this. Oof. And yeah, it's incredible. Like we would have to normally run through like a bunch of different distortions or wave shaper and mess up and have to use a DC offset filter or a low pass filter on a bunch of different samples to get something like this. So it's incredible. And I'm also using a little generator on the master output. Try to tame everything. Jesus, over here. That sounds pretty good. If I just get rid of all the nasty harm mics. Let's go. Also, 
also, if you notice here, I am not doing the draw map. So that I can get the um, the texture and the the brightness of the the models from the lower part of the drive, and then the the deep dark uh, guitar sound from the drive that's farther to the right. It's great. If I were to flip it over, you can get the opposite. You can get soft distortion and then get something crispy at the end. So it's it's amazing you can do this. It's a small bar. There you go. Yes, but I made so many of these different sounds already. Look at this. Let's see. What we got here. I'm telling you, this 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 plugin is the ne it's the next level thing when it comes to some of them for these type of like hard dance, hard techno genres. You can really push a synthesizer, and you won't hurt your ears. You won't distort your output because you can use a compressor. It just sounds so good. Also, the compressor has this uh, auto gain feature, so you don't blow out your ears or your speakers like that. Just amazing. Uh, let's put this back. Where it should have been. But yeah, that's what I want to show you with the, with the punch of the kick drums. The reverse basses are a little bit easier to make here as well, compared to other synthesizers. Why? For a couple of, a couple of reasons. Well, I'm using Gatekeeper right here. I can actually recreate the whole thing Using envelope generators or a XLFO. So let me show you how to create some side chaining with this. So we're gonna put it somewhere on there. We're gonna use the glide right here. Yeah. If I push it down, I can make it a little bit steeper. And I could also change right there the smoothness right there. Yeah, I could also change the type of a uh, wave I want to use. So I can make a little bit smoother type of a uh, of um, shaping. Now, I'm going to put this on the volume. Now, what's really cool about Fat Filter Twin 3 is that you can run it right where you want it to be, right there. You can go a lot deeper, all the way to overdriving. I know you can control the, the smoothness of this uh, of the glide. So you want something that's tighter, or you can tighten it up right there. Something that's smoother, right there as well. And that's amazing, okay? So I, I just wanna show you that. Okay. Now if you're gonna be working with, uh, with a free running oscillator, a quick tip is, Thank you. 
if you push this forward, you're gonna push forward the first steps. And then if you push this backwards, you're gonna push back the, the, st the last steps. I believe this also works if you have a temple sync, I think. Let's see. See that? How cool is that? That's really amazing. So it means that if I have something that's, you know, a little bit in triplet, I can find the sweet spot for it. And it's as easy as, as that to follow. Okay. Now I want to show you guys the top part of the bass. Nice and gritty. None of you notice. We're using keyboard tracking, we can get amazing results when pitching the kick drum. We don't necessarily have to export the kick drum as a WAV file and then pitch it up and down. Though you could also do that, but we can get some really nice results doing this just inside a twin. So this is really helpful because if I want to change my, my MIDI notes or my melodies, it's just as simple as writing MIDI. I don't have to render audio. I have to go look for the file or go open up another program to pitch the kick in another program. You know what I'm talking about, you guys who use a certain program uh, to pitch your kick drums outside of your regular DAW and then bring it back to my DAW and then pitch it up and down there. Uh, and compare it to the rendering from my DAW to see what it sounds like. You don't have to worry about that nonsense. You can just do it here. Just grabbing the keyboard tracking and sending it up to like, moderate the frequencies on the... filters. And they will snap musically. Now, we could also change the frequency filter offset. And as, as easy as pushing out the, the filter peak, also you can get like peeps. And then, for example, if your kick drum is missing some like sine wave or a second harmonic, you can just add it with the uh, with uh, with a sine wave or a triangle wave. Here's the um, the wave I have here. No, the little popping you hear is from the media itself that I wrote. It has you're supposed to do a little jumpy thing with the punches. But I'm not sure it's there anymore. But anywho, y'all get the point.
it's as easy as that to change your sound. Like, I mean, it takes four or five minutes and you got a completely new, like, kick drum or reverse bass. It's, it's incredible. Uh, and what I did here, as you can see, is I copied them, made new, new versions of the tracks and erased part of the, the basses or the talks and then layered them, made a new version. So easy to do. Uh, you don't have to really think much about it. Um, let's go back to this that I had here. And then compare it to this other one. You can see that this one's much, much harsher. Has much more harsh, uh, high frequencies because I push the resonance up a lot. Almost to the point of being uh, unlistenable. But on that sweet spot, it sounds amazing. And that's what you can do with a lot of the, the twin patches when it comes to percussion. Um, there's also lots of really good percussion included inside of the, um, the default uh, patches. And that's a default patch that I modified a tiny bit. Um, yeah. Compared to the original patch. I just closed it up a little tiny bit. You can see here, closed on the envelope. much it and it was good to go from the box so check out a lot of these different uh, sounds they, they just sound so good And then I think this sound got the detracted. Cool. Really cool sounds. Then someone made the the take you there snare. And then we. It's just amazing that, you, that they were able to do that. I'm guessing they did, let's see. They triggered something later? Is that what happened? Yep. They, they, they pulled back the, the, the delay on the envelope. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> Let's rename this. Badum. Booms. There you go. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> Oh, that, that's fine. Alright, 
No. There's a really cool patch here that I use the Sumac Boom. If you have a sub right now, you're definitely feeling that. I know it. Oof. And you can see the drifting between the different oscillators. It's so beautiful. Such an amazing GUI. Um, GUI. Um, let's go back to the, the snare here. There you go. We have, let's see, the impact claps. <laughs> really good. So this this machine you can definitely use it for like stuff like techno. It actually reminds me a lot of the ER drum machine from Korg. Because you can modulate the uh the delay here, let me show you. And it just sounds so wicked. It is so fantastic. And then check this out. Let's add a envelope generator to that. Uh, let's add a generator. If I was using another DAW, I could use the envelope followers. But unfortunately, I'm, I, I'm not using Cubase or FL Studio right now. So I'm not able to do, um, do that. But... I'm guessing if I'm going to release longer. <laughs> that is so cool, that is so cool. It's how the release really belongs. And 
And then <laughs> I just I just like doing this sometimes like parallel. Then I have another band pass right here. Yeah. Let's also push the residents here. Amazing. This is incredible. We'll do. We kind of get this effect like a crash, like those impact crashes, but without all the abrasive staticness. How did they get out of this cloud? And then we hear is a crash. That's that was from a preset called the moderate ride. All I really did was I changed the filter, added two more filters, increase the resonance. And I modulated them with uh, more of the XLFOs. And yeah. That's pretty much all they did to the patch. Back to it. So. Filters. And I did try to tune them. Come on, open up. Okay. There we go, something like that. And then I added more delay to this. And let's see, I did a little trick with the, um, that I showed you earlier with the two parallel filters. By the way, you can use four filters here, which is pretty nuts. Pretty darn nuts, if you tell me. I've seen people that, they use uh, uh, Twin 2 to create like sequences, like they would just like do like a little snippet of a saw wave and then just make like um, melodies using the delay and the XLFOs because the XLFOs have these, uh, these no assignments so you can um, snap the filter uh, frequencies to different notes, which is amazing. So let's do uh, two... two uh, Let's see, yeah, we'll do the bells. We'll make one raw and we'll make... We'll ping pong the delay. And of course, we've got a tempo with bit two around one quarter note. And then we can change it. One of them. A little bit deeper.
Oh, and yeah, I push this one up a little bit harder. Just so I could get more, um, more low end. Because a lot, a lot of people, they will filter out the low end on, on rides or like hi hats, and it's like, you still need to have like that, that transient, that impact of the whole frequency spectrum. Uh, I know maybe you don't want the sub, but don't go around taking 1k from hi hats. It's a uh, a bit unnecessary, you're losing that envelope as well. There you go, that's much beefier. That is a little bit more authoritative than just a little. Out. For the other one. Out. The second one would be a little bit better. Even. Let's look at the polyphonic stuff here. So we have uh, the leads. This little sound right here is so darn cute. I know it might not fit with the track, but I just wanted to keep it in there. It sounds like a toy. But I was like, okay, cool. Let's, let's do something a little bit different. Usually we just have more strings up there or like more screeches up there, but I wanted to do something different. And this is coming from a preset. Just <clears throat> excuse me. Let's uh, loop this section. Now this is not polyphonic yet, but the, the little section over there is. And let's see, let's go to the preset right. Just So I wanted a little bit, I wanted a little bit more um, modulation on that vibrato because I'm I'm not sure if that patch is vibrato or just detune. So 
So this is more in the, in, in the line of leads, but I wanted to do a little bit more like a, like a bell type of thing. So what I ended up doing was I use the XLFO, modulate the master tuning or add another one. Hmm. But I added another one. Oh, here we go. Be this one. So I had another uh, XLFO running free, and then I basically modulated all the different oscillators, but exactly the same. So they would all be pretty much um, um, what I wanted to do was reduce the, the possibilities of detunement. And with a synth that's already doing the drifting by itself, it's kind of hard not to do it, but I wanted to try to prevent it. So it's there, it's part of the sound. And then there's also a envelope here that's modulating all the, the detunes over here, the pulse widths. And I think this, these were mostly from the original patch maker. The credit goes out to the B Manic. And the other thing I did was I shortened the envelope, of course. And I set the polyphony to work better with the track that I'm working on. And reduce it dra drastically, actually. Yeah, so I basically use that to clean up the sound and make it a little bit more pure in comparison to the rest of the track, because the, the rest of the track is a distorted mess, but this I wanted to have a little bit of focus, a little bit of sunshine. Now the leads, uh, probably th some of the easiest stuff to do in the whole track. Because the synth is so, so good for polyphonic stuff. Let's um, reduplicate this track. Uh, wait, though. Or mute it. Or solo it, sorry. And... Let's, um... Go back to MIDI and reset. So there you go. We got that sound that's completely... Feeble, weak, just a saw wave. It's um, well, we all come to know of the unflavorful saw wave. I would argue that this, a sine wave is much more pleasant to hear than just a saw wave like that. So the saw wave needs a little bit more processing, in my point of view. So first, of, let's uh, add more polyphony because we need to play more notes, I'm going to add, you can do 8 and 8. You see there, we got the unison spread. That works different from the detune. But in conjunction with the, with the detune here, we can make things go even wider. And then pan one to the left and one to the right, uh, but only, oh, sorry. Let's do minus three, 
three. Okay, and then we're gonna pound one to the right, one to the left. And we're gonna add a third. Oscillator right there. Let's add more voices. There we go. Open up the filter. Now, I would recommend to bring down the MIDI before you bring down the stuff on the actual synth itself or the parameters. Lower the ADSR. Now we're gonna add an other envelope generator. Now this is gonna go on the filter. Bring the filter down though. Put on the frequency. We'll make sure that this is shorter than when we got here. So let's put it around half the time. Okay, and I'm going to add an uh, XY controller to moderate the EG2's uh, application on the filter 1 frequency. So now if I were to bring the filter in lower, Gonna make it work. However, if I were to keep this a lot higher, or lower down here, we can appreciate how the XY will still apply and move the filter one frequency there. See that? Boom. And this all also depends on the level. Now, you better be careful if you have a high pass filter, right? Like so. And Apply the XYM to the frequency offset. Check this out. It will eventually thin out your sound. Yeah. It's a little bit thinner. If you were to also do this, let's say, or if this envelope would also be on this, uh, um, on this frequency right there, the situation would be abbreviated and you would lose out a lot of your bottom end, which could be useful if you're trying to remove some of the side information on the drop um, in the low frequency so that the kick can come out cleaner. But if you're doing this all the time, it's not going to sound good when when there's no bass and you just have the leads, it's going to sound just thin. So be careful with that. I struggled a little bit with that. I will, with my head, you know, going around all the different circles of having a bunch of different filters and the, fre uh, the filter frequency offset. I was twiddling around and I was like, why is this? Why does this keep on moving? And I was like, oh, that's right. This, this should be down here.
now I get a little bit of the clean cleanliness of um, using the filter on the low end and the 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 underwater feeling that you get when you put a filter on. But without losing that bottom end. So that's a really good tip for you guys. Uh, that was a little annoying at first, but I got around it. So there you go. Um, so that's that patch right there. In addition, what you could do is manje the E decay. Or you might want to do that on the on the envelopes over here. Okay, so now we've messed around with the oscillators, with the filters, and with the modulations. Let's look at the effects here for the leads. Now, remember how I said that we can use this envelope? Let's let's use it and apply on the reverb. So now we can make space for the leads when they're playing, but then open up the reverb to play uh, when there's no leads. Open. Beautiful. Okay. Now we can also add envelope to modulate the, the delay amount. Turn on and then we can add a little delay. And now when you pause the lead, you got the delays coming in. This is really cool because we can do away with using like sound effects a lot uh, and include them inside our patches now and they don't really get in the way of the actual sound, which is fantastic. Now these delays are a little bit different from the ones in Timeless 3, I believe they're a little redesigned. So that's pretty cool. And also the reverb. So you get some really nice um, new algorithms. There's also this chorus right here. With single and double mode. and it goes up to 10 Hertz. So you have that at your disposal. Now I wanna show you the phaser. Let's turn it on. It goes up to 25 Hertz. And then you can also be flanger. <laughs> I 
That's pretty wicked right there. It's so clean. It is so clean. <laughs> All right. Let's try the phaser again. I'm guessing if you add an, uh, sorry, LFO, and add a few steps. Let's do, let's just four for now. Okay. Let's set them linear and let's add the keyboard. A, let's do. Skip F. A A A. Was. Yes, we can get whistles. <laughs> that is so crazy. Let's see, let's, let's just try out white noise. Hold on. Random, random, random. I said everything to random. This is so crazy. Ugh. That is absolutely brilliant. And then they go back to where they used to be. That is so interesting. <laughs> that is so crazy. Let's call this the whistle patch. Now, 
The cool thing about the distortion unit is you can run it after the effects. You can definitely make some rhythms with this at another XLFO, but in this case, we'll do do eight of them. Let's Okay, now, this might seem like it's going nowhere, but it could be some hard style screeches right here. Okay, it's absolutely crazy. Okay, <laughs> slight deviation right there. Okay, let's, let's go back to the patches. As you can see here, I'm not really using drive for these because I want to have them clean. But there's another lead over here which I consider the main lead. So for that one, I wanted to add a little bit more tone to add to the drive. And does push it a little bit harder. We do lose the, the higher frequencies, but uh, we push a little bit harder. So I prefer that, I think it adds a little bit unnecessary character.
Now I can make this high quality. I can increase my voices to make it even more rich. Now, the reason why I had eight earlier was because I had this even more detuned when I was working the track. But I dialed it back a significant amount. Now, a cool thing is that because we can modulate um, the filters with our keyboard tracking, and we have the filter frequency offset, this means that we can add bands as if it were EQ and it will move around with their patch. So let's say if I want to get rid of a little bit of uh, some nasal stuff. I can then add a keyboard tracking. easy as that I have an EQ that moves around with my synthesizer that's built into my synthesizer and I don't, I don't have to go to Pro Q3 as often <laughs> um, but anyway that's there um, I used to do that sometimes with Pro Q3 but I would have to do the MIDI mapping which was it was in a nightmare um, but it was a little bit complex to do and then if I went back to the session and I forgot how I set up my stuff it could be gone but with this, it's all built into the synthesizer, so it makes my life a lot easier. Okay, now there's one other patch that I want to look at before we call it a day. And that was the... where is it? The ARP. Solo the ARP. So beautiful. Ah, uh, okay. So the ARP is to me the, the patch that shows me what Twin is really about. It's such a simple patch. It's so simple, but because you have these really great filters, a fantastic oscillator set that has the drifting, um, and the the effects that have. These algorithms that the guys from FatFilter made that are extremely dynamic and they're so fluid. Um, if, you, if you thought that the, the algorithms on uh, Pro R were really transparent when you would move them across the, um, the, um, the reverb time, these are equally as good or might be even better because when you consider that you're going through lots of distortions and modulating through them, that is mind blowing. So here we have a, a XY pad that's modulating the filter frequency offset, XL02, a peak offset, a coarse amount, and LXO, F, XFL, XLFO2. Here the XLFO1 is modulating the frequency, filter frequency of the one filter that I have turned on, the FX drive amount, and that's modulated through eight bars. Then I have an a, um, another XFL that's moving across eight bars. 
Now this is modulating the filter frequency offset in a different way. The coarse amount, and this is these are both getting modulated by the XLFO. And finally, there's an a uh, filter filter frequency offset from the envelope generator right there. And am I even using? I'm not even using keyboard tracking for this one. It sounds so good already. Um, but that's also because of the arpeggiators turn on. So um, without the arpeggiator, it just sounds like this. Oof. That's such a pretty sound still. <laughs> and then there's a, the, once you turn on the, uh, the ARP, you can uh, set it to have a, a different uh, note length. So right now I have uh, eighth notes and triplet. So it has pretty much everything you would want. And it also has this really cool little feature, which is the arpeggiator legato. So you're able to move the little groove back and forth a little bit, which is really, really crazy. Uh, along with the offset. Okay, so first of all, for the Okay, so first off for the Okay, for the ARP here that I have, I have a rate offset turned on. Without it, it sounds a little more like this. But because we have the triplet, it's moved over there. Okay, so this is this stuff is really really cool. We also have the octave transpose. And that will work if you're holding the notes long enough for it to reach that second octave. You can also use the notes up down. Random. Or as played. Okay. That's the ARP section. So 
yeah, we just dove a tiny little bit into Fefilter Twin 3. Uh, I'm going to be making more patches with Twin 3. Uh, they have a little dubstep demo thing that I made. Uh, let me show you guys so I can entice you to come to watch the next video. Um, let's uh, go to my um, inspector. I haven't used Studio One in a while. How do I... Instrument. Here we go. Okay. Enable them. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's just play it from here. So yeah, I'm still getting used to the, the whole dubstep stuff with uh, Twin 3. You can definitely create some cool textures. Also, the distortion, again, super lovely. And these patches are basically just like the Karsta ones. There's no processing on them. Just the internal uh, distortion, compressor, reverb, comp um, chorus, phaser, and delay. Absolutely mind-blowing. Anyway. Okay, so I'm going to leave you guys at that. A little tease for the next one. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, Heart store or sound design uh, session. Uh, this was just the easier one for me to do because whenever I approach a new synthesizer, I always try to make the stuff that will make you feel comfortable and also a little bit of the stuff that makes you feel like a little bit on the edge. So I wasn't too sure about like making the heart style kick drums with the twin, but it worked really great. So I was really um, uh, not surprised by it, but. Um, actually uh motivated when i started to see that the envelopes were really consistent because sometimes you find with synthesizers it's really hard to get the envelopes right uh for percussions and then with twin it was amazing it was just right off the bat great um so that that was really awesome okay so um yeah hopefully in the next videos i can show you some of the other stuff like the um i believe that we can press each note and trigger a different oscillator with each note, which is fantastic. I think something like the Monopoly, uh, you know, so I'm really lo looking forward to try that out and share with you guys. All right, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something new today. Once again, I'm Kevin Ochoa with Music Marketing TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated with the latest uh, music production software there is. And uh, hit the notification bell so you guys watch uh, can get new videos in your stream or in your subscri subscriber box. I forget what it's called. Anyway, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.